Hey there YouTube, my name is Grant and welcome to GH Books. And today I am continuing my series of reviews of books I used for a big project on my main channel, all of these books being about ISIS. And so today I am reviewing The Great War of Our Time, the CIA's struggle against terrorism from Al-Qaeda to ISIS. And this book is written by the former CIA Deputy Chief Michael Morrell. He narrates his time in the service from 1980 during the Iranian hostage crisis to 2013 where we were just beginning to see the beginnings of ISIS's public coming out and Obama's red line in Syria. The author first served as an analyst for the CIA but eventually he worked his way up through the ranks to the point where in 2001 he was the CIA briefer for President George W. Bush. And eventually, during Obama's administration, he became chief deputy of the CIA. And in fact, for the last few months of his service, was the acting chief of the CIA due to that one having to resign. He was there for the decision to invade Iraq in 2003, and he was there for the decision to try and take bin Laden in 2011. There's a very interesting anecdote from the book, in which he talks about, in the weeks leading up to the bin Laden raid, he's asked by President Obama if bin Laden is there. And a funny thing he remembers telling the president is that there was more evidence that Saddam Hussein had had weapons of mass destruction than there was for bin Laden being at that compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. So that's just, I found to be the, one of the most interesting things in this book is that, wow, so you're saying Obama made a call that had less evidence than the weapons of mass destruction deal in Iraq. Now, granted, the consequences of those two things were very different scales, but fact of the matter is that we had less information trying to take the guy that started this whole series of events in the first place. It's just pretty remarkable, in my opinion. The previous book about ISIS I have reviewed focused far more on the roots of ISIS through its leaders and the Iraq War. But this book focuses far more on the Al-Qaeda roots of ISIS, and in particular, the author believes that Al-Qaeda is still a bigger threat to Western security than ISIS is. In fact, he doesn't give much attention to ISIS until the very end. And even then, he doesn't really s portray ISIS as a big threat, just more as just another offshoot of Al-Qaeda. He justifies this belief by pointing out the different strategies and goals of the two organizations. ISIS wants to overthrow the apostate regimes of the Middle East that are being backed by foreign governments, while Al-Qaeda, on the other hand, wants to fight the enemy abroad. They're the ones that want to fight the Westerners on their own soil. And so that, he believes, is the much bigger threat. He doesn't think that ISIS is going to try any attacks on Western soil, but since the publishing of this book, that is proven to be false. There have been several attempts on Western soil by ISIS attacks. There's a number of them. I can't think of them at the top of my head. The only one I can think of is the one in Australia that happened earlier this year. But, like I said, this is the guy who was former head, head of the CIA. He knows somewhat of what he's talking about. And so, I would find that this is a very good book if you want to learn about the links between ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And so I would give it a very strong recommendation. If you want to know more about ISIS, I have a couple videos you can watch. There's this video here, which explains the relationship between ISIS, Iran, and the Federal Reserve monetary policy. But that video is about 27 minutes long. So if you just want stuff about ISIS, then I suggest you watch this video here, which is about 10, 11 minutes long. It just covers the stuff about ISIS. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and keep reading.